What's going on everybody? I thought a fun video to make would be discussing the different engine configurations found in motorcycles. Most people think it's just the burbly V-twin and a Harley and the high-pitched sound of a four-cylinder on a sport bike, but there's actually a lot of different wiggle room between all those. So I wanted to just make a quick video talking about them. Um, this isn't going to be like a super technical breakdown of the merits and you know, benefits and cons and pros and pros and cons of uh, different motorcycle configurations. It's really just gonna be a more of an introduction into just the different configuration layouts. So let's get started. Single cylinders. Single cylinder is probably the most simple motorcycle design there is. It's literally, as the name implies, one cylinder going up and down, uh, mounted vertically like this. So most entry level sort of budget bikes found in the developing world, for example, single cylinders, 125cc bike, you can almost guarantee it's gonna be one single cylinder. Uh, they're usually called thumper motors because of their characteristic of kind of thumping away. Most dirt bikes you're gonna see are gonna be single cylinder engines. That's because if you had two cylinders going on a dirt bike because they're so lightweight, you actually kind of flex the chassis a little bit. So that single cylinder keeps it nice and tight. Here's what they sound like. And it wouldn't be complete without the two-stroke version either, so here's what that sounds like. V-twins. So a V-twin, as the name implies, is a two-cylinder motorcycle where one cylinder's over here and the other cylinder's over here, and that's mounted this way across the motorcycle, right? So if you have one wheel here, the other wheel here, you got a V like this mounted longitudinally like this. That's gonna give the engine a nice slim characteristic to it. There are V-twins and two cylinder motors that poke out the other way, but we'll get into that. The V-twins probably the, one of the most characteristic motorcycle sounds that's known. Think of any Harley, any kind of big burbly sounding bike. It's probably a V-twin. Here's what that sounds like. On the other end of the spectrum, you have really high-end V-twins that are tuned to infinity, something like the Ducati Panigale, for example. Here's what that sounds like. Another two-figure configuration that's really popular for entry-level bikes is the parallel twin. That's gonna be coming off our same example. Here's the wheel, here's the wheel, motorcycle going this way. Two cylinders are like this, so parallel twin. Basically, you can think of it as like a four-cylinder motor, but just half of it, so they're just doing that. The twin's gonna have the advantage of being relatively narrow and easy to work on, making it a really great budget bike entry-level sort of motor of choice. One of the disadvantages that it has, though, despite having reasonable power and torque, is its vibration. But nowadays, with balancer shafts and different firing orders, you can kind of squeeze that vibration out of the motor. Here's what it sounds like. And other times, a parallel twin can sound like this. Now why is that? The firing order. So the sound you just heard from the FZ07 is a 270 degree crank, making that very distinct burbly sound that makes it real mean and throaty. Boxer twins. Rounding off our two cylinder discussion are boxer twins. So going back to our diagram here, you have wheel here, a wheel here, and we've seen V twins going like this, parallel twins going like this, and now boxer twins are actually gonna be like this. So the cylinders move in this direction relative to the bike, which is going in this direction. Kind of weird. This configuration is gonna make the center of gravity super low because the cylinders are actually going in this direction as opposed to up and down. And they're actually really easy to work on because the heads are right here out to the side. Here's what that sounds like. Now what's really cool about this configuration is it's actually super old. It goes back to like the 1920s and BMW has been making these for nearly a hundred years now. Three cylinders. Ah, as everyone knows, my favorite engine configuration. Well, one of my favorite, probably my favorite. The three cylinder is gonna sit right between the V-twin and the four cylinder in terms of a blend of good torque, good top end, and I think one of the best exhaust sounds ever. Here's what it sounds like.
Triples are gonna offer a really linear power band, excellent torque, good top end, but some people say that they're neither torquey like a V-twin or have the top end of a four cylinder. I think those people are stupid, whatever. I love three cylinders. I love them so much that I own two bikes with three cylinders. The inline four, arguably next to the V-twin, the most characteristic motorcycle sound there is. Think of any sport bike that you've seen in movies, TV shows. They have that high pitch, just like Meow! sound. It's a four cylinder bike. It's a ubiquitous power plant. And as the name implies, we have our motorcycle here, wheel and wheel. You have one, two, three, four. So four cylinders sitting right here and the engine goes this way. So four cylinders, engine this way, and the wheels are right here. Pretty simple. Inline fours are really great at a super smooth power delivery, typically involving a really nice top end rush. Think of something like the R6 or the CBR1000. It's gonna have that really big top end rush. That's one of their big characteristics. Here's what they sound like, in case you didn't already know. Now, going back to what we were talking about with the parallel twin, you can also change up the firing order on the four cylinder, and that gives you something how the R1 sounds. Here's what that sounds like. It's crazy, right? That's still a four cylinder in a line, but because the firing order is different, it has a totally different tone to it. I love the way the R1 sounds. V4s, this is probably my second favorite engine configuration next to triples. The V4 has an awesome soundtrack to it. And as the name implies, think of the V-twin we talked about. So you have the wheel here, wheel here, and then a V-shape. But now, instead of a V-twin, we're gonna have one, two, and then one, two, stacked like this. They're really, really sweet engines. They're inherently smooth, inherently just throaty and a good torque pull. Honda has been quoted saying that the V4 is one of the most balanced and optimal engine configurations that a motorcycle can have. Not sure if that's true or not. Just heard that on the internet a little bit. Do your own research. Don't quote Yami. He doesn't know anything. He's a noob. And here's what they sound like. And of course, just for fun, here's what a two-stroke V4 sounds like. The V5. Yes, you heard me right. The V5 is an engine configuration that is exceptionally exotic, typically found only in racing bikes. I couldn't find a single example of a road-going bike that had a V5. Now, knowing that I've said that, someone's gonna chime in on the comments with a road-going V5. I couldn't find one. If you can, please link it below. That'd be super cool. Here's what they sound like. Yeah, pretty crazy, race bike stuff. So the V5 is oriented like this. You have three cylinders pointing this way and then two cylinders kind of pointing this way, right? The Honda MotoGP engine was set up like that. The two cylinders were in the rear and the three cylinders were in the front. So here's the wheels and then here's the motor. Crazy engine setup. Inline six, yes, there have been motorcycles made with inline six cylinder engines. So much like the inline four, but now with two more cylinders over here. Here's what that sounds like. Yeah, literal F1 car stuff. Amazing, I love the inline six sound, but unfortunately, because it was a little exotic, consumers thought it was just too many cylinders. They didn't really sell too well, so there's only a couple examples of six cylinders bikes because of that reason. Thanks for checking out this video, guys. Hopefully you learned a little bit about different engine configurations. Let me know in the comments if I left anything out. I'm pretty sure I covered almost all the examples of bike engines that I could think of. Um, if I didn't, let me know. You know, obviously there's V8 powered bikes and turbine powered bikes. I didn't really include those because they're kind of ridiculous, but anyways, hope you liked it and I'll catch y'all on the next one. See you later.